Okay, so here's what I have. Five to the fourth power, guys, is what number? It's 625. And because I have four 50s, I tacked on four zeros. And that's how I got, that's how I got 6,250,000. Nice job, Jason. Eleanor, what do you have for me? Practice fraction. Wait a minute. Can you give me an example of something that you did? Practice addition and multiplication with fraction. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, hold on one second. I'm gonna just uh, copy down something in a year grade. Four. Hold on one second. And I want you to, Eleanor, to write down the problem that you want to share with us, multiplying fractions. And I want to hear about that. All what right? do you mean? Well, you said that you've been practicing multiplying fractions. So one and is. And addition. So what you want to do is give me an example that we can share with the whole group. Can you do that? Do you want multiplication or, add, or addition? Well, what's your favorite? My favorites are multiplication. Well, it's easier, your... actually. Yeah, it actually is easier. And hold on one second. I'm just going to copy something to your file right now. And boom, let's do it. So, Eleanor, can you give me the multiplication example you want to share with the group? And you're muted. I don't know. Well, come on, let's do it. How about uh, two thirds times four fifths? Okay. Everybody, wait, don't, don't say it out loud. Jason B, write it down. Jason E, write it down. Okay. And Eleanor, why don't you give us the answer for this one? The answer is a 15. Wow. So Jason and Jason, did you also multiply two times four to get the numerator and three times five to get the denominator? Did you do that? By the way, anybody who is um, annotating right now, please stop because all it does is obscure the screen. So please erase your annotations. And now let's try another one. Let's do three fourths times four fifths. Now this one is special. There's something very, very special going on with this one. Because you do not have to multiply across first. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the four and the four. Because when you have four fourths, four over four, that's really one over one, which is really just plain old one. So we don't even need to worry about that. Three times one, one times five, everybody say it on three. One, two, three, go. Eight. No. Come three on. Fifths. Three fifths. Three fifths. Eleanor, do you see that? Yes. It's three fifths. 
Jason E, can you unmute yourself? Did you get three fifths, Jason E? Yes. Good, 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 good. Now watch what happens when we do this multiple times. Watch this. Five sixths times six sevenths. Oh, hi, Valerie. Hi there, how are you? Valerie, can you hear us? 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 Valerie, if you can hear me, please put your thumb up. Okay, so I don't think that she is hearing us. Jason B, Eleanor, and Jason E, can you hear me? Put your thumbs up if you can. Okay, so this is for Valerie. Can who is a Miss Rose? Us. Oh. Well, don't worry about that. And Christina, do you are you able to hear us? Can you give me thumbs up? Thumbs up or down, if you can hear us. Oh, I guess they're gone. So now, who's got the answer to this question? Jason E, how about you? Jason E, you'll have to unmute yourself. Come on, buddy, keep yourself unmuted. <clears throat> 3.90. No. Buddy, what did we just do? We just canceled four over four and got three fifths. So here we cancel six over six. And what do we get, Jason? Five or seven. Yeah, so where are you coming up with these other numbers? You know that, Jason. Come on, buddy. Jason B, are you ready for the next one? Jason B. Yes. Go for it. Everybody look Seven how fast you can do this. Seven ninths. Seven ninths. Done. Eleanor, let's try this next one. Eight ninths times nine tenths. But be careful, Eleanor. You can simplify this fraction. Four and five. Wow, yeah. Eleanor, that's amazing. So Eleanor, I'm telling you something. Please. I can't tell me tell you something. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Actually, you can find the internet very easily because maybe I already told you the answer. Because the first number on the top. What? Is the one that is going to be on the top, and then the bottom, the second number is going to be on the bottom. Right. So eight tenths becomes four over five. Four times one is four, and one times five is five. So the only thing, Eleanor, that you have to say that's really important. Oh wait, Christina, can you hear me? Take it. Christina, can you hear us? Okay. Um, so, guys, this is really important. Okay, this is really important. Eleanor, when you say this fraction, can you say it again, please? Four fifths. Very good. Very, very good. Now, are you guys watching this? We're going to have some fun with this. Two thirds times three fourths times four fifths times five sixths times six sevenths. You can do that in a couple of seconds. In a couple of seconds. Now write it down and you can cross everything out that cancels. So think about this. And Eleanor, I'd love to hear 
if you have this answer or Jason B or Jason E. And remember guys, you can cross cancel and look at what happens. Eleanor, what did you get? Two servants. Now, do you guys know that if you had not cross canceled, if you had not cross canceled, you would have had to do two times three times four times five times six. And then you would have had to divide that by three times four times five times six times seven. Does anybody want to see what a crazy fraction that would be to yes. solve? Yes. It's a little scary. So I hope you're sitting down. Okay. The numerator is 720. Okay. And let's see if I can figure out the denominator is 2520. Now, if we did that, which would be very, very silly when we could cross cancel, you would have to then take 720 over 2520. And oh, Valerie, can you hear us now? Yes. Oh, that's great, honey. How Mr. are you? Mr. Faber? Yes, Good. Eleanor. I think we can simplify it. Well, we have to. And guys, the first thing we're going to do is you see that there's a zero on the end of each number? Yes. What that means is, and I don't see Jason E. What that means is we can divide the top and bottom by what number? Jason B, do you know? Valerie, do you know? Ten. All right. And if we do that, look what happens, everybody. Look what happens. It becomes 72 over 252. Essentially, what happens is the zeros go away. One zero on the top, one zero on the bottom. Now, let's do it again. Should we divide? Does anybody know what number we should divide by now? Two. Ooh, two is good. Let's do it. Everybody divide 72 by two. So come on guys, everybody do it. Don't say it out loud, please. Jason E, please sit in your chair and get working. Valerie, do you have it yet, honey? Um, I'm still working on it. So, Valerie, tell me, how many times does two go into seven? Three times is the remainder of one. And how many times does two go into 12? Come on, Valerie, you can do this. 12 divided by two. That's the remainder of one. No, come on. 12, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. It's six. 12 goes into, uh, two goes into 12, six times, Valerie. You know that half of 12 is six. So the answer to the numerator is 36. Jason E, sit down in your chair, please, and get working right now and unmute yourself. Okay, now, um, Jason B, can you tell me what happened when you divided 252 by two? Go. 120 squared plus 126. And do you see that two goes into two once, two goes into five twice, remainder one. Valerie, two goes into 12, how many times? Six. That's right. And so we get 126. Eleanor, what should we do now? I think we should simplify it. By dividing by what? 
we can spell some more by and by we can spell divided by two. Of course, because they're both even numbers. So let's do it. Let's do it. Divide what by about, two. Divide see. by two. We could divide by three also, but let's divide by two. Come on, we can do it. And Valerie, I want you to do the first one. Two goes into three one time with the remainder of one. And? Come on, two goes into 16, Valerie. Goes into 16 eight times. So what's the answer to the numerator? 18. 18, and Eleanor, what about the denominator? The answer is 33. Ooh, I don't know about that. When I have 126. I got 63. 63, very good. Now everybody, we have 18 over 63. Jason B, what should we divide by now? Come on, guys, add the digits. Add the digits. One plus eight is nine. Six plus three is nine. We can divide the top and bottom by nine. nine. Go ahead and do it, guys. 18 divided by nine. Raise your hand if you've got it. How many times does nine go into 18? Count by nines. Nine. Say it. Go. Two. Two, seven. And 63 divided by nine is seven. seven. Oh, my God. Guys, do you look at the number we got for our answer about five minutes ago? Would you ever, ever multiply a cross without first cross canceling and say, no way. We love to cross cancel and it's a lot of fun. So now let's talk about five. Is five a factor of 60? And what we mean to say here does five divide evenly into 60? All right. So Valerie, what do you think about this? Um, five divides evenly to 60? It's the question. Yes or no? Jason E., it's been a long time, buddy. Unmute yourself and get working. No. Uh, no, why does five not go into 60, Valerie? Because five isn't an even number. Doesn't have to be. The, the divisibility rule for five. I know. That the number ends in what, guys? Zero or five. If it ends in zero or five, Valerie, take 60. Divide it by five. Five goes into six once, remainder one. Five goes into 10 twice. So Valerie, answer the question. Is five a factor of 60? No. Honey, yes, yes, yes. Because the 60 ends in zero. If the number ends in zero or Four. Five. five. It's a multiple of five. Valerie, why does five go into 60? Because what times what equals 60? Five times 12. Come on, say equals equals. 60. Equals 60. That's right. Now, let's try another one. Valerie, does... Is three, is five a factor of 365? Yeah. Valerie, is five a factor of 365? If the rule is that it has to end in a zero or a five, 
Is five a factor of 365? Yes. Yes. Very good. Eleanor, the number is five a factor of 2,354. No. 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 Because it doesn't end in a zero or, or a, five. a five. Very, very good. Jason B., can you hear us? Jason B., you are, your video is off. Can you hear us, Jason? Yes. Okay, good. Good, good, good. All right. Now, the next one. Is seven a divisor of 43? Please raise your hand. Is seven a divisor of 43? Which means when you divide the number by seven, there will be no remainder if it is a divisor. All right. What do you think, Jason B? Is seven a divisor of 43? Jason, is seven a divisor of 43? Is no. there, it is not a divisor because 43 divided by seven equals what, everybody? Come on, how many times does seven go into 43? Let's count, go. Seven. Seven. Fourteen. Fourteen. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Thirty-five. Thirty-four. Forty-two. Forty-two. So seven goes into forty-three. Jason E, get back to the table. Jason E, come back to your chair. Come on, buddy. Jason E, get back over here, please. All right, let's just forget about Jason for just a moment. And guys, 43 divided by seven equals six. Well, the remainder of one. The remainder of one, which means six and one seventh. Okay, Jason E, can you hear me? Jason E, can you hear us? All right, I don't know what's going on with him. All right, now, Eleanor is 96 divisible by four. Everybody do this problem. Everybody do this problem. All right. Eleanor, go for it. Yes. Yes. And why is 96 divisible by four? Because. Come on, four times what equals 96? 24. Four goes into nine twice, remainder one. Four goes into 16, four times. 24, beautiful job. Now, Valerie, Valerie is 34, a multiple of seven. That means when you count by seven, do you get exactly 34? No. No. And that's because, Jason E, do you hear us? Jason E, can you hear us? Give me a thumbs up, Jason, if you can hear us. So he can't hear us. So Valerie, what is 34 divided by seven? Four. With a remainder of? of mm, three. Remember four times seven is 28. Six. Exactly. So four and six what, Eleanor? Seven. Four and six. Four and six, what? Seven. Right. Always, always, always. Four and six sevenths. Very good. Now, 
is three a divisor of 111? And Jason E, can you hear us? Jason E, can you hear us? Okay. Get working on this, guys. I know it. Hey, hold on a second. Okay, let's go. Eleanor? Yes. Why? Because one plus one plus one equals three. If you add the digits and they add up to a multiple of three, we know it works. Now, did anybody divide, did anybody divide 111 by three? Valerie, did you do that? Yes. And what'd you get? 37. Wow. Three remainder two. Oh my God. That is beautiful, beautiful work. I'm so proud of you. Amazing. Now let's do the next one. Can everybody here list three prime numbers? And after you list three prime numbers, I want you to keep going. What does three prime numbers mean? Well, prime numbers are only, Jason E, can you hear us? Yes. Okay, Did, have you been hearing us the whole time? Yes. Okay, when I, Jason E, when I ask you, if you can hear us, please give me a thumbs up. You've got to answer yes. And please unmute yourself right now. Right now, unmute yourself. Do not mute yourself again. This is very important. Jason, E, can you understand me? Okay, Jason, say, I will not, un I will not mute myself. I will not unmute myself. Please. Okay, prime numbers, Eleanor can only be divisible by one and the number itself. So who here knows the first prime number, the smallest prime number? What is that? Valerie, do you know it? Jason E, do you know it? Okay, go ahead, Eleanor. Zero. Ah, now it's very good. That was a very good answer. But zero? Okay, let, let's hear first about Valerie. Valerie, do you know the first prime number? Two. Ah, zero and one are not prime and not, whoops, and not composite. So the first prime number, everybody, is two. What's the next prime number? The next number that is only divisible by one and itself. Jason E? I think uh, the, the smallest number after two that is only divisible by one and itself. I think uh, four. 
Say it again, please. Four. Well, Jason, four definitely is one times four, but can't we also do two times two? So four is not prime. In fact, you will never have another nine, even nine, prime. Nine, 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 nine. Oh, nine. Same thing. Nine equals three times three, as well as nine times one. So nine is not prime. Think smaller, Jason. Think smaller. What's eight, the number? Eight, eight. No, eight. Jason. Never an even number. Never an I guess. even. Hold on a second, Eleanor. Never an even number after the number two. Never, never, seven, never. Seven, 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 seven. Seven is definitely a prime number, but it is not the next one. Valerie, what's the next one? Three. And Eleanor. Five. Five. Now, who knows the next one? Remember, nine is not prime. Go for it. Eleven. Oh. Eleven. Wait, did somebody say 10? No, no. No, okay. I said cool, 11. Good, good. Now, I want to show you something really special. When Mr. Kramer does prime numbers, he always likes to write down the first 25 prime numbers. They're my favorites. So you've already given me, these are going to be a list of prime numbers. Now you've already given me two, three, five, seven, and 11. Who can write down the next five? Write down the next five prime numbers. Now remember, Jason, pick up your pencil. You do not need to think about even numbers anymore. You think in odd numbers and always test the numbers to see if they add up to a multiple of three. If they do, they cannot be prime. Jason E is not working. That's true, Jason, but I want you to write down the next five and you're not doing that. I know you're not doing that because I can see both of your hands. So please write down the first five, the next five primes. Eleanor, give me two more. 17. And? 23. Ah, but Valerie, did she miss one? Um, she missed 19. 19. Very good. Jason E, do you know the next one? And uh, 17. Seven. 37 is definitely a prime number, but 37 is it's not the next one. It's not the next one. Eleanor, what's the next one? I think the next one is 27. Oh, did you add the digits, Eleanor, of 27 to find that it's nine? 27 equals three times nine. So it is not prime. Beautiful try, Valerie. 29. Right. And, and Eleanor or Jason, what is the next prime number after 29? Go ahead, honey. 31. Yes. And watch this. 33 is not prime because three plus three is six. It's divisible by three. 33 equals three times 11. Now we also know that 35 is not prime. How do I know that 35 is not prime? Because of three plus a five. Because it equals a three plus a five. Because it equals a three plus a five equals eight. Five times seven. No, no, no. Jason. Do not, if you add the digits, 
That is not the rule for five. The rule is, does it what, Eleanor? If it ends in a five or a zero. So if it yeah, ends in a, a five, prime. it cannot be prime. Because it can be divisible by pi. So Jason, do you understand that it has <coughs> nothing to do with the sum of the digits? Jason, do you understand that? Yes. Okay, now I want everybody to write down the next five prime numbers. Don't say them out loud, write them down. Okay, who wants to start? Let's, Eleanor, you can take the first two and then Jason can take the next two and then Valerie. What's Jason? J well, Jason B is not here right now. I don't so Jason know. E? It would be Jason E for sure. 41, 43. Wow. Valerie, what did you get, honey? Um, for the next two. For the next two, um, 47 or 51. Did you get the same thing, Eleanor? Yes. And what about you, Jason E? Did you get the same thing also? Yeah. Okay, well, guess what, guys? Mr. Kramer did not. Because when I added the digits, I what did you get? 47 is definitely prime. But when I added the digits of five and one, didn't I get six? Yes. So you know that 51, 51 cannot be prime because 51 equals three times 17. You got to add the digits. Every one of you forgot to add the digits. So if you add the digits of the number and it adds up to a multiple of three, it cannot be prime. So, Valerie, what is the next prime number? 53. Nice. And now, Jason E., what is the next prime number? 53. Jason E., can you hear me? Okay, good, buddy. What's the next prime number? You wrote down five. I know you did. I'll give you guys one second here. Uh. <coughs> okay. Jason E, are you ready? Okay, give me the next one, buddy. Come on, Jason E, we're waiting for the next prime number. It is 57. Mm, Jason E, you forgot to add the digit. We just talked about that. If you add seven plus five, you get 12. 
and 12 is a multiple of three, Jason. In fact, if you add one plus two, you get three. So 57 <laughs> is not prime. Valerie. 50. Nine. Nine. Exactly. 59. Eleanor, what's the next one? Um, 61. 61 is correct. Jason E., do you have the next one? Remember, it can't be 63, Jason, because that adds up to a multiple of nine. It can't be 65 because it ends in a five. It's divisible by five. So what's the next one, Jason? 60. Seven? Yes, Jason, high five, buddy. Awesome job. Awesome. Valerie, what's the next one? Um, Valerie, what do you think? Eleanor, do you want to help her out? Yes. I think it is 69. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. 71. Wait a minute. Somebody <laughs> did not add the digits. If you don't add the digits. 71. Look at this, guys. 69. Add the digits, it adds up to 15, which is a multiple of three. And 71. Seven, 71, yes. Valerie, what's the next one? Um, and Jason, I'm gonna be asking you for the next one. Three. Oh, that's nice. And Jason E, what's the next one? Jason E, what's the next one, buddy? Come on, Jason E. Seventy-seven. Well, do you know that when you count by 11, Jason, 11, 22, 33, 44, 55, 66, and? 77. So 77 is seven times 11. It is not prime. So Jason, what do you think is the next prime number? I think, I think it's uh, 13, no, 87, 7, 7. Ooh. Well, 87 is not a prime number because when you add the digits, Jason, which I've been asking you to do each and every time, you get a multiple of three, three, six, nine, 12, 15. So Eleanor, what is the next prime number after 73? 79. Yes, 79. And then Valerie, what's the next one? Um, 83. Oh, nice, because you know that 81 is not prime because 81 
is three times 27 or nine times nine. <laughs> now, Jason E, you know 85 and 87 are not prime. So what's the next prime number, Jason E? You know the 89. 89 is right. 89 is right. And Eleanor and Valerie and Jason, you can say the last one. 91, 91. Oh, interesting. Now 91 is not a multiple of three. Clearly, but 91 is a three. multiple of seven. Uh, 93. Give them the blue. Um, it is a multiple of seven. Seven goes into nine once with a remainder of two. Seven goes into 21 three times. So then 91, then 93. 93, 9 plus 3 equals 12, which is a multiple of 3, everybody. Come 97, on. 7. And that is the last prime number under 100. There are 25 prime... There are 25 prime numbers from one to 100. There are 25. Now, I challenge all of you right now to add the first nine prime numbers. Add them. I'm gonna show you, Mr. Kramer loves to add numbers but he always adds vertically. He always adds vertically, write them down. Anybody who's not writing down these numbers is not participating. So let's see you do it. Jason E, are you writing these numbers down? Good, 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 good. And by the way, if I were you, I would make tens Look how one and nine make a 10. That's an example. I think you're gonna be very, very excited when you get the answer. I'm gonna connect more tens because I love connecting tens. I don't know if there's anything more fun. Okay, Does, did anybody get the ones column? Who got the ones column? I just uh, had a 50, but uh, I didn't add a 23. Yeah, but buddy, you have the ones column. Just add the ones column. Valerie, what'd you get? Um, 40. Right, it's 40. And so you carry the four in the tens column. 
four. Come on, guys. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What do we get? A hundred. Wait a minute. The first nine prime numbers add up to 100? That's crazy. Who would ever think of that? That's so cool. So I love adding prime numbers. Who loves adding prime numbers too? Raise your hand. Now, I have an idea. Let's add the next nine prime numbers. We're not gonna have time to do it, but let's try it like this. You ready? 29, 31, 37, 41, 43, 47, 53, 59 and 61. I want you guys to add those numbers and I'll write the answer in the file that I send you right now. I will write the answer, but I don't want you to see it just yet. So everybody work on that and you can continue working on it after we end the meeting. And remember, don't yell out the answer when you get it. It's a really, really cool answer. And I like it very, very much. So what I'm gonna do right now, Jason E, Bring, bring your video back, buddy. Yeah. Is I'm going to create this file for you. And I'm going to send it to you guys right now with the answer. But don't look at it until you try it yourself. And remember, yeah. it's all about tens. Nine and one. Seven and three, seven and three, nine and one. But don't forget that missing number that has no friends. That one didn't have any friends to make 10. So that's going to be really, really helpful to you. So guys, I will see you next week and I'll write the answer down before I send it over. Okay, everybody have a great week. I love you guys. My Bye. favorite mathematicians. Bye. Keep working. Keep working. Keep working.